everyone and welcome to another incredible time in God's presence. This is still GCM Children's Zone and we are excited that you could join us today again. How was your week? Did you do your homework? Awesome! You are incredible! If you didn't do your homework, you still have another chance. Let's take up this challenge and learn and grow together. I believe in you. Let's make our Heavenly Father very happy with us. Would you do this? Okay. Before we continue, please join me. Let's pray and appreciate God for this beautiful time of sharing and learning together. Put your hands together. Close your eyes. Bow your head. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Father, we thank you for your love that never fails. Father, we thank you for freely giving us all things to enjoy. Father, we thank you for always being there to save and deliver us from all evil. We thank you, our God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you help us to always know that there is victory in you. Teach us your will, Lord. Help us to learn and be like you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Last week, we learned to choose and to stand for God and Him alone. But this week, oh my, we will discover a phenomenal truth. Are you ready? Today, we will learn that God wants us to call on Him for help in times of trouble. The Bible says that He is our very present help in times of need. He has also assured us that when the enemy rise up against us, that like a flood, his spirit will raise a standard against him. Hallelujah! You know what? Sit back, relax, and discover with me how Queen Esther dared to approach the king without invitation, knowing that the consequence could cost her her life. Was she scared? Did the king spare her life eventually? Did God come through for her? Hold on to the thoughts for now. Come along with me. Let's sing and dance gracefully and cheerfully. I promise you, you will love today's songs. Okay, let's zoom into our song time. At the count of three, let's go. One, two, three, let's go.
morning beautiful children of God it's so amazing to be in the presence of God isn't it children good who can remember our last week memory verse yes Proverbs chapter 23 verse 17 and it says do not let your heart envy sinners but be zealous for the Lord all the day long. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 17. Wow! I'm so proud of you children. I hope you made the right choices that enabled you to stand for God last week. May God help you to continue to stand for Him always. Children, how many of you are facing one problem or trouble at the moment? Maybe things are very difficult at home right now because your mom or dad lost their job or their business is not really going very well. It may also be because someone you love is sick or you are finding it hard to get along with your brother or sister. Our memory verse for today tells us what we can do when we have times of trouble. Our memory verse is taken from the Word of God. It is from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is in the Old Testament of the Bible. The book of Psalms is after the book of Job and before the book of Proverbs. Children, for easier understanding, we are going to use New King James Version of the Bible. In Psalm chapter 50 verse 15, God says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. Now, let's look at some key words and phrases in this verse. Call upon me in the day of trouble. When you have problems, you can talk to God about it, asking him to help you. I will deliver you. God may not always take the trouble away, but he will take care of you and help you. And you shall glorify me. When God helps you, give him the honor and praise by thanking him and letting others know it was God who helped you. If you have already called on God to save you from your sin, then you can also call on God to help you in times of trouble. He will hear and answer you. If you have not received Jesus, you can call on God to help you. He is the only one who can forgive you for all the things you have done, said or thought that break God's laws. You will have an opportunity to call on God to save you from your sin later in our Bible lesson time. Children, it is time to keep God's word in our heart. Let's all read the verse together. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Psalm 50 verse 15. If you are making up your mind to call upon God to help you anytime you are facing with troubles, read the verse with me. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. If you are currently facing some difficulty and you would like God to help you and your family, let us read the verse together. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. Let only the boys and girls who would like to glorify God in all they do say the memory verse with me. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15 Call upon me in the day of trouble 
and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Psalm chapter 50 verse 15. Well done, boys and girls. Give yourself a sound clap. Another one. A very big one. God bless you, children. Children, don't go away. Sit still and remain attentive as we go on to our Bible lesson. See you next week, children. children and welcome to another amazing time with God's word. I trust that you have been enjoying the book of Esther so far. Last week we looked at how Mordecai's refusal to bow to Haman had put the entire Jewish people in a terrible situation. There had been a decree for the Jews to be destroyed on the 13th day of the 12th month. How do you think the people must have felt upon hearing this terrible news? Can God rescue his people from this decree that cannot be changed? Let's find out. Bang, bang, bang. The servant drove the nail deep, fastening a copy of the king's new law onto a wooden post in the marketplace in Shushan, where everybody could read it. Climbing back on his horse, he galloped swiftly out of the city. There were many more copies he had to post by the end of the day. Curious people gathered around the post to read the king's decree. They turned away in sadness and shock. All the Jews were to be killed on the 13th day of the 12th month. What have the Jews done to deserve such severe punishment? The patients must have wondered. They were confused and troubled by this cruel message now being carried throughout the kingdom. As he read the decree, Mordecai's heart filled with grief for his people. In refusing to bow before Haman, he had put the Jews in terrible danger. Mordecai stood outside the king's gate and cried out loudly, showing his grief by covering himself in rough sack clothes and ashes. In every province, the Jews fasted. That means they stopped eating and wept as they read this law that could never be changed. In the palace, Queen Esther had apparently not yet heard about the new law. Her servants told her that Mordecai was outside the king's gate, dressed in sackcloth and crying in distress. She wondered what had happened to bring such grief to Mordecai. She probably wished she could rush out and comfort him, but patient law wouldn't allow her to do that. Esther gathered some clothes and sent them to Mordecai. But Mordecai refused the clothes. When Esther found out, she was deeply concerned. She sent Hatak, a trusted servant, to find out what was troubling Mordecai. Hatak found Mordecai in the city square in front of the king's gate. The queen is very concerned. Hatek said, she wants to know what is troubling you. Mordecai told Hatek all that had happened. How Haman's anger over his refusal to bow had resulted in a terrible law declaring death to all the Jews in the kingdom. Haman had promised to pay much silver into the king's treasuries to see that the Jews are destroyed. 
Mordecai explained. He handed Hatak a copy of the decree that had been posted in the city. Take this to the queen, Mordecai urged. Tell her that she must go to the king and beg for the lives of her people. Hatak returned to Queen Esther and handed her the copy of the law. He told her exactly what Mordecai had said. Esther's troubled eyes scanned the words. Her heart must have pounded as she realized the great danger that she and her people were in. She thought about Mordecai's message to her that she must go to the king on behalf of her people. Mordecai doesn't understand, she must have thought. Has he forgotten the patient laws? What he is asking me to do will risk my life. The laws in Patia stated that if anyone went before the king uninvited, he could immediately be put to death unless the king granted him mercy by holding out his golden scepter. The scepter was a special button that showed the king's authority. The king had not called for Esther to come to him for the past month. I know my people need help, but I just get Rick's going before the king, Esther must have thought. Esther and her people were in terrible trouble. Where could they go for help? Children, when you have troubles in your life, do you know where to go for help? All of us face difficult times. Perhaps your mom or dad have lost a job and you're worried about how your family will have enough money to buy what you need. Maybe someone you love is very sick or it could be that you're having troubles in school with a particular subject that is very difficult for you to understand. The troubles in your life can make you worried afraid or even angry sometimes others can help you but people don't always know what to do they may not even have the answers you need but i know someone who is always ready and able to help if you know the lord jesus as your savior you can call on god to help you he is your heavenly father and he promises to care for you and meet your needs in our memory verse today, God says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. According to Psalms chapter 50 verse 15, you can trust God's promise to deliver you and bring glory to Him. Isn't it very comforting to know that we have a God we can call upon in times of trouble? Esther and her people were in terrible trouble. Where could she go for help? Going to the king as Mordecai had asked her to do was very risky. Perhaps Hater could see the worry in Esther's eyes. You must give Mordecai this message, she said. All the servants throughout the kingdom know that anyone who dares to go into the inner court before the king without being called by him will be put to death. Only the person to whom the king holds out the golden scepter will leave. Then she added, Tell Mordecai that I have not been called to go before the king for 30 days. Hatek hurried out to Mordecai and delivered the queen's message. Mordecai's face looked grim as he listened to Esther's words. He knew that the danger to her life was great in going to the king. You must take this message to Queen Esther. Do not think that because you are the queen and live in the palace that you will escape when all the other Jews are killed. If you do not speak up for your people, they will be saved in some other way, but you and your father's family will be destroyed. Mordecai knew that God would use some other ways to protect his people, even if Esther did not help. 
Mordecai gave one last plea for Hatak to deliver to the queen. Perhaps, Esther, you have become queen in the palace for this very reason. Mordecai must have believed that God in his providence had arranged the circumstances so that Esther would be in a unique position to help her people. Hatak returned to the queen and told her all that Mordecai had said. As Esther thought about Mordecai's words, she may have wondered, could it be true? Has God been at work to bring me to this point so I could be of help to my people? Maybe Esther had never seen her situation quite this way before. Esther knew what she must do. She said to Hatek, Tell Mordecai to go and gather together all the Jews in Shushan and fast for me. Don't eat or drink anything for three days night or day my maids and i will fast too then i will go before the king even though it is against the law and if i die i die in asking the jews to fast esther was probably also asking them to pray in the jewish culture fasting and prayer always went together when the Jews fasted and prayed, they were expecting God's answer. Esther must have known that she and her people couldn't face their troubles alone. They needed God's help. Boys and girls, you don't need to face your troubles alone either. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you can call on God to help you. To call on God means to talk to Him in prayer. You can do that anytime, anywhere. You don't have to close your eyes or say the words out loud. Instead of being worried, afraid or angry, just tell God about the trouble in your life. Ask Him to help you and then trust Him while you wait. You can tell God about your mom or dad who needs a job, your friend who is very sick or that difficult subject in school. Ask him to help you with these problems, then trust him while you wait for his answers. Esther must have known that she and her people couldn't face their problems alone. They needed God's help. She gave Hatak the message, asking Mordecai to gather the Jews to fast for three days. As she called for help from the Jews, Esther courageously prepared to take action even if it meant she would die. Hatak took Esther's message to Mordecai. What a relief Mordecai must have felt knowing that Esther would stand up for her people. He hurried off in his rough sack clothes to spread the message among the Jews. They must gather to fast for three days for Queen Esther. Then she would go to the king and beg for their lives. Esther had called for help from the Jews and they would gladly do it. The hope of Esther and the other Jews was not in their fasting and prayers. Their only hope for deliverance from their troubles was in the goodness of their great God who delights in answering the prayers of his people. That same God is your only hope for being delivered from your troubles too. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you can call on God to help you. Whatever trouble you face this week, will you remember to call on God? Before you do anything else, talk to God in prayer. Trust Him to help you in His perfect time and way. He may show you what to do or direct you to someone who can help. He may do a miracle to solve the problem immediately or He might ask you to wait and trust in Him. 
Whatever answer he gives, you can glorify and praise him for his goodness to you. Children, you can be assured of God's promises of help and answer to your prayers if you already know the Lord Jesus as Savior. However, if you have never before called on the Lord Jesus as your Savior from sin, you can do that today. The Bible says, For whatsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, according to Romans chapter 10 verse 13. To do so, you need to first admit to God that you have sinned. You also must believe with all your heart that the Lord Jesus died on the cross as the only way your sin can be forgiven. Then you can call on the Lord Jesus asking him to forgive your sin and save you from sin's punishment. Now go ahead and talk to him. Amen. It's been another wonderful time with you today. Would you like to know how God listened to the cry of his people and came to their rescue? Then join us next week Sunday at the same time. God bless you boys and girls. Hello boys and girls, welcome to another review time. I'm so excited to be here. Are you? Now, let's move over to the first question. What did Mordecai want Esther to do to help save the people? A. Go and ask the king for gold and silver. B. Go and ask the king for new clothes or C. Go and ask the king to save the lives of her people. What is your answer, children? Very correct. If you picked C, you are very correct. Mordecai wanted Esther to go and ask the king to help save the lives of her people. Now let's move over to the next question. What did Mordecai tell Esther would happen if she didn't go to the king? What did Mordecai tell Esther would happen if she didn't go to the king? A. Her life wouldn't be saved even if she was queen. B. He would stop being her friend. Or C. The Jews will not respect her again. Pick your answer, children. Very correct. Her life wouldn't be saved even if she was queen. Now let's move over to the next question. What did it mean when Esther asked the Jews to fast for her? What did it mean when Esther asked the Jews to fast for her? A. Not to eat or drink anything and probably pray for her. Or B. To start running very fast or C, not to eat meat at all. Pick your answer, children. Very correct. A is the correct answer. It means that none of them should eat or drink anything and probably pray for her. Now, let's go over to the next question. Why do you think Esther would want the Jews to pray? Why do you think Esther would want the Jews to pray? A. She wanted them to pray for God to come save them. Or B. Their prayers made her strong. Or C. She needed God's help to have courage to go in and speak with the king. Pick your answer, children. Very 
very correct. If you picked C, you are very correct. She needed God's help to have courage to go in and speak with the king. Now let's move over to the next question. What did Esther say she would do for her people? What did Esther say she would do for her people? A. Go to the king and ask him to spare their lives. B. Help them escape. Or C. Become their leader. Pick your answer, children. Very correct. A is the correct answer. Esther asked the king to spare the lives of her people. Now let's go over to the next question. What do you think you should do when God helps you with a problem? What do you think you should do when God helps you with a problem? A. Be proud and boastful. B. Thank him and tell others about how he answered your prayer. Or C. Keep it to yourself. Pick your answer, children. Thank him and tell others about how he answered your prayer. Thank him and tell others about how he answered your prayer. Well done boys and girls, you have done amazing, amazing work and I'm proud of you. Make sure you go back, read and study and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you what aunties and uncles have taught you today Today, tell me, wasn't that awesome? What was your favorite part? The story time, the memory verse time, the review time, or the song time? I particularly love the song time, and I will tell you why. Have you ever been in trouble before and you see no way out? Worry no more. Because we now know that there is victory for us in Christ through his blood. Hallelujah. I feel like screaming and shouting. Ooh, God is good. Indeed, happiness is to know the Savior. Our song is so profound. It says, I have found a secret. It's Jesus in my heart. So comforting. Don't you think so, my friend? There is another song that comes to my mind. What a friend we have in Jesus. Do you know that song? He is our very present help in times of need. Don't you love God? And in the Bible story, can you imagine how Queen Esther received strength and boldness to go into the king's court without being summoned? She probably knew something that most people in her time didn't know. The Bible says that those who know their God will be strong and do exploit. Oh my, do you really understand this? They will do great and wonderful things. She asked her people and her family to join her in praying for favor as she gets into the presence of the king. Wow! God gave her strength and favor and she was ready to go and see the king. An incredible lesson for us all. Know that God is always there for you. He will deliver you from all evil. Awesome! God is always asking for us to come to him with all our challenges. Will you let him? Will you let God help you? Give him a chance to be your friend. He wants to get involved in every aspect of your life. 
let's be like Queen Esther and call on him to save us whenever we are in trouble. Glory to God. I am excited about the next part and I am sure you know what is next. Ah, assignment time. Well done. You are super smart. Our assignment for this week is to write a message to God. Each time you are faced with a difficult situation, write a message to God that you will read to him. Remember, prayer is simply talking to God. To make it easy for you to pray, write what you want to say to God. That thing that is troubling you, write it down and ask God to help you. Then read it out loudly or quietly in your heart to him. I believe he will hear you and he will come to help you. In addition, I will make a video to show you another assignment you have. You will make a call on Jesus bracelet. I promise you, you would love it. Watch out for our short video. I am sure you will agree with me that we have had a pleasant time, my friend. But we have to go now. Remember, stay safe. Wash your hands regularly. Read your Bibles. Pray every day. We in GCM Children's Zone love you. But Jesus loves you so much. Bye for now. Bye. See you soon. Bye.